Hello and welcome along to this next uh, in the series of videos uh, about the second version of Chocolatey's Quick Deployment Environment or QDE. So in this video I'm going to look at taking a different base image, uh, the OVF, and getting that imported into my locally running uh, VMware Fusion instance. So the, uh, on the documentation page under the uh, Quick Deployment Environment Setup, you can click on uh, this OVF section and it will mention exactly what you need to do uh, to get it imported. Now, unlike the VMDK file, uh, there's slightly less things to do because some of the uh, default uh, suggestions in terms of uh, CPU, number of CPUs, uh, memory uh, capacity, etc. They're all already defined within that base OVF. So it's a little bit easier to get started with. So let's take a look. Uh, now, in terms of the file that you will download from uh, the, the sales folks, uh, it will be a 7-zip file. You can go ahead and get that extracted. Uh, now, on my uh, Mac, I've just double-clicked that, and it's given me this uh, OVF folder with some contents in it, which is the base VMDK and the OVF file, which is where all the configuration is. Um, that takes a little bit of a while, uh, so that's why I haven't done it on this video. We're just going to jump straight into using it. Uh, on a Windows machine, it would just be a, a right-click and extract to get you there. So... Over here in my VMware Fusion instance, I'm going to go ahead and rather than clicking new, which is what I did in a previous video uh, about the VMDK, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the import and I'm going to browse to where that OVF file is located. So on my machine, I'm going to go up to here into my temp folder and then look for QDE v2. There's the OVF folder and then this is the OVF file itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click open. And then from there, I'm literally going to click continue. So uh, before, I would have had to uh, do a few more steps. Those aren't needed when we use this. I'm just going to give it a name here that I will remember. So I'm going to call it QDE uh, v2 uh, Chocolate Server. The name that you give it here uh, doesn't have any bearing on uh, the running instance. It's just for how you can identify the VM within your uh, tooling. So that's going to go and import that uh, image. Now that will take a little bit of while, uh, but once that's imported, what we then will need to do is we'll do a sanity check to make sure that everything has been given the uh, right information in terms of uh, memory and CPUs. We'll also look at changing the uh, hard drive or the size of the hard drive of the running instance because um, the recommendation going into a live QDE environment is that it has uh, lots of hard drive space. Uh, we don't we, we ship the VM uh, base image with 100 gigabytes allocated, um, but we recommend more. So if we look up here uh, to have at least 500 gigabytes, that's the recommendation at the minute. So we'll look at what we need to do to uh, get that up and running as well. So I'm going to let that finish importing. Uh, so I'll pause the video here and we'll come back once this is ready. So that's the VM finished importing there. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll just click on uh, Customize Settings, which will bring us into the uh, section where we can uh, play with expanding the hard drive. So uh, click on the hard drive here. So by default, we gave it that 100 gigabytes. I'm going to increase that to 150. Now, the recommendation is at least 500. For the purposes of what I'm doing here, uh, I'm only going to give it 150 because uh, I'm effectively going to throw this VM away at the end of this video. So uh, I don't need to worry about that. I just want to show the process of uh, expanding that disk and uh, making it available to the running instance of QDE. So I've given it 150. So once that's finished expanding, we will boot the operating system and we will uh, make sure that everything is set up the way that we want it to. And then the last thing we want to do uh, on my running instance of VMware Fusion is I also want to install uh, the VMware tools, which improves the uh, usage of the VM in terms of uh, mouse clicks, uh, integrations, pulling, drag and dropping things out of the VM, etc. That Those things are uh, much improved once you install uh, the VMware tools onto the running machine. So let's... Uh, Take a look at that once this is ready. Okay, so that's that ready there. I'm going to press play on the VM and let that boot. So I can close this menu out because I don't need that anymore. And once the VM is uh, booted, we will need to uh, log into this machine using the credentials that you would have been provided by with the sales team. Now, I'm not going to go into what that uh, base password here 
is on this video because um, obviously those things those sort of things are subject to change but the uh, the email or the, the communication that you would have had with the sales team would have let you know uh, what the uh, password is and what you will be uh, prompted for is to immediately change that password on initial login so that it's now um, set up for your environment so I'm going to send control alt delete here into this VM and then I'm going to type in the password and assuming that I type that correctly I should be prompted with the option to change it so here I'm going to change it to something that I'll remember and then we should be in so what I'm then going to do is I'm going to through the VMware Fusion menu I am going to mount the VMware Tools ISO into this machine so if I click on the virtual machine when menu here and then say install VMware tools, I should then get an option to mount that CD-ROM drive. And then we should be able to execute it. So I'm going to open up uh, Windows Explorer here. And I'm going to go to this PC and then there we go. The VMware tools ISO is mounted in the D drive. If I double click on that, it should run that installation. Now you will be asked whether you want what kind of installation you want to do. I tend to always do a complete installation. Uh, I find that works well for me. So if we open that up and click next and click complete and then say next and then finish. Now, this will require a reboot of the VM. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to check was, I can see it here already. So uh, this CD-ROM, this CD-ROM, this uh, C drive has already expanded to uh, take up the available space that was allocated to it. If that hasn't happened, uh, there is documentation on how you can resize the, the hard drive if required on the website. Um, so that's what's going on there. Uh, like I say, for me, on my uh, hypervisor, that's already been taken care of. There's, there's nothing else for me to do there. Uh, your hypervisor may be different, okay? So let's just let this finish. And then like I say, we should be prompted to reboot. And then we'll come back into the VM one more time uh, just to make sure that uh, all the settings have been applied correctly. And I will talk to you about the, the next phase, what needs to happen uh, next, okay? So this is almost there. Let's just let that finish out says there we go so i'm going to try and click that finish button this is what i'm meaning in terms of the vm being a little bit harder to use until you get the tools installed it's getting hard to click on that finish button so i'm not entirely sure what's going on there it's either a combination of my mouse there we go there we go click finish and then i'll be prompted to say yes so i'm going to say yes Okay, so the, the mouse movement, the cursor movement should be far better once this VM boots again. <clears throat> so again, that's just the operating system rebooting. And we'll log in, check to see that everything is set up. And then that is will be the end of this video. There'll be uh, nothing else to discuss here until we start configuring um, the setup QDE. So logging in with the password that I used when we changed it. And the sanity check that I wanted to provide was if we right click and say system, we should see that this running instance of QDE has the recommended four processors and uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. We already saw that the hard drive has the expanded 150 gigabytes that we gave it, which it does. So the final thing I want to point out here is there's a there's a readme.html file on the desktop here. We double click on that. We'll be prompted of which browser we want to use. I'm going to use Chrome, which is installed on this machine. And this is uh, what we're going to use for the remainder of the initial setup of, uh, of a QDE instance. This is very similar to the documentation that you'd find on the chocolate.org website directly. It's just it's provided here directly uh, on the running instance of the VM as well. So it's got... Uh, the specific information that's needed for this running instance of QDE. So that's what we'll look at in the uh, upcoming videos in the series. So hopefully see you there. Thank you very much.